Okay, so we are playing a game. Um, we are playing black. Uh, let's go knight f6. We are obviously playing the kings in the defense. Okay, so let's go g6. I guess we will see knight c3 and maybe e4. Okay, so he's playing this line. Now in this line I recommend um, play, let's go d6, c6, okay, and knight d7. Now we're ready to play e5. You might see even some bishop maneuvers. Okay, so uh, in this position we can play uh, e5, we can go rook e8, we can go um, a5, maybe queen b6, we got many ideas, but maybe even uh, queen c7. So in this position, obviously we can go for, <clears throat> for the line, we attack at the center immediately, and let's <clears throat> go e8, rook e8, okay? Okay, so we take now. I do enjoy playing those uh, close positions, so let's take ourselves. If he's going to take with the rook, I'm going to take back. And the main idea of this move is to close this uh, bishop completely and try to um, try to attack from the the <coughs> uh, the queen side. Now, in this position, if I'm going to play uh, knight c c5, I will build up some pressure against uh, e4 pawn. But if we will play in this position before, I don't really have, I don't really have any advance. So let's play a4 in order to uh, restrict uh, White from play, from playing uh, b4. Now, if you will see that he's, he will try to prepare this move, I can also play a4 in order to take Anpasa. So a4 is definitely good for us, but still we need to to make sure that uh, <coughs> everything is uh, safe and sound. Now, <coughs> after bishop uh, g5, we can go h6, we can take with the queen. And basically in this position, <coughs> we can go uh, bishop d7 and maybe prepare h5 in, in order to create some pressure on the center, yeah, on the king side, sorry. Okay, and uh, take notice that uh, on some maneuvers of the queen, you also have a very nice fork. So I really like this position uh, uh, for the for the knight. And in this position, I actually think it's good to take, even though it seems like scary to take because um, it's got a powerful rook on the f file. You open up yourself the e file, and do, you do open up yourself this uh, diagonal for uh, your bishop. So. Maybe for the moment we are slightly worse, but I do think this it might be interesting. And maybe we can also build some pressure on the, this uh, h3 pawn. Okay, and again guys, on those kinds of position, try to understand if, for example, uh, the queen is going to play, not now obviously, but maybe later, uh, queen d2 or maybe queen c1, and then you have a very nice fork. Fork, so a player can a players can fall for that. Okay, so he's taking with the rook. Now, <clears throat> against this move, I guess we can also fall back, which is completely fine. And in this position, uh, I might consider even prepare a five, and uh, maybe try to increase the pressure against this pawn, but. At this moment, I don't really see how we, we can build some more pressure. Um, and yes, and obviously not now, but we do want to try and uh, build more pressure on uh, E4. But basically, it's uh, impossible to build some pressure right now. So I want to see how he's going to play. Okay, so he's building some pressure on the F file, uh, which 
makes completely sense. Now, as you see, there's still no no fork on this position. I mean, we maybe have some tricks that we can try to go B3, and if we move, we can try to go for the fork, but I think this is uh, not not so good because he can maybe try to um, to avoid it, you know, even play it like, uh, for example, uh, Rook E1 and increase the pressure on my position. So I don't think this is... Actually, but Rook E1, you have this very nice fork, nice fork. So basically, if he moves, um, almost everything is covered, but what about... Rook d1, yeah. So rook d1 is a, is an issue because I don't really see an answer for rook d1. Okay, so let's let's move the rook back in order to rest, um, protect everything, and we can also prepare f5. Okay, so in this position, for example, playing g4 for white seems like a very good uh, move. <clears throat> Okay, also uh, uh, take notice that he's got a nice outpost on b5, so he can try to build some pressure on our position. Uh, so sometimes bishop to d7 is really good in order to restrict the knight and take when possible. Yes, so he played uh, f5, uh, f, uh, yes, uh, g4, makes sense, in order to, um, you know, uh, for, it's, uh, for, uh, uh, for make it harder for us to play uh, the f5 uh, break, sorry. Uh, so let's improve the position and again I might try to play this move I'm not counting on that that he will fall for it but uh, fall for it but maybe we can somehow try to improve the position I can't really see it yet but we can maybe try something and last we need to try to improve the position of the rook so moving the oh okay so it did fall for it so we build up our pressure this is really good for us now before playing that always uh, try to understand if you got something better but obviously taking this pawn is not really good as taking this uh, <coughs> uh, this rook so in this position I do want to play this but I don't really want to lose uh, the pawn so let's keep improving um, H7 seems like a good move. Now maybe F5 can be interesting. Now F5 can be quite interesting, and it can obviously try to decline. But yeah, F5 is interesting. So my question is, do I play F5 or maybe go Rook C8 first? What do we want to do, guys? Yeah, I think we can even play aggressive. Okay, again, this diagonal is completely closed, so uh, our king is still safe. We can always tuck the king on h7 or maybe h8 if we need. And basically, the moment that we are about to take this pawn, this rook will serve us really well. And the reason I don't really want to play rook c8 yet, because I think this move is more aggressive and we are prepared to play it. Also... <clears throat> Uh, we need to be careful from any bishop takes and then it can increase the pressure on our position so we need to be uh, kind of careful so maybe even rook to e8 can come to mind can comes to mind so let's see and i do think we have the upper hand so let's take with the pawn and if in this position I might uh, even uh, force a queen exchange, that's, that's, this can all be, always be a nice idea because you will see that uh, those pawns will become weaker. We do need to uh, deal with those knight, okay? And also knight can be quite tricky under time pressure, but well, basically kind of okay on the clock. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Obviously, I can take and win with a tempo on the queen, and then it can take and we can exchange. We can also try to improve the position a little bit more before going for that. No, but yeah, I, I kind of like the, this idea. Now we got a, a tempo on the queen, and we're up the exchange, so jumping for the, to the end game seems like a very nice idea. <clears throat> Yes, 
And again, it's quite tempting to to try to attack the queen, but always keep an eye on on this pawn. Uh, this pawn can come uh, can uh, become a, a big liability, so <clears throat> we need to be careful. Okay, so he might even resign in this position. He can also take, and we can try to trade. After taking, I can also try to improve my position with the rook. So in case of an exchange, I already got the head start. And as you can see, we got some pressure on this position. And yes, if we can even jump back, as you see, those knight maneuvers, especially um, after the board, <coughs> is uh, not, not close as, as the beginning of, uh, of the game, if you remember. So this position is still close, but after finding the right square for your knight, Okay, you have some some tricks. So I did talked about it and talked about it, and uh, th those small maneuvers can just win you the game. So you cannot really count on those uh, blunders from your opponent uh, in order to win games. But you need to keep in mind that maybe the the placement of the knight is good, and maybe you want to just improve the position a little bit. Maybe try to open some uh, lines. But keep in mind that you do want to uh, uh, try to find a weakness. On your opponent uh, structure okay and again this move is natural because the idea was to play a uh, rook f1 i have no doubt and then you have immense pressure on your pawn and it's i guess it's almost impossible to play a five and then maybe you need to play more passive like moves like uh, bishop to e8 or maybe try to double up some uh, double up somehow and as you see it's not really easy to find weaknesses uh, on your opponent structure like uh, maybe we can try to win this pawn, but it's quite passive. Okay, so <clears throat> he declined and he doesn't uh, take this pawn. And again, we can still try to improve the position. <clears throat> Obviously, I cannot play queen f7 because uh, this rook will be protected and I don't really want to take too much time. So we can improve but as you see he's trying to restrict my bishop so maybe he will have some uh, some ideas so I can try maybe force the trade no but I cannot force the, the trade like this we need to be a little bit more careful than that but I guess he's got some maneuvers so we can improve the position and try to attack maybe I don't want uh, to take too much time thinking, so <clears throat> this is, seems like a good idea, okay? <clears throat> now, obviously, if he's going to take, I'm going to take with my bishop. I don't really see a reason to double up those pawns. Okay, so you want the pawn back. And he builds some pressure on my position, but... Let's do a small adjustment before going for the attack and we're going to win this uh, pawn. Okay, and pressure this knight. Okay, so he saw that obviously, so let's jump for it. Obviously, we are better on the clock, so I don't really want to um, think about the position for too long. Now, here we can play bishop and have some uh, small exchange also this pawn might fall so let's improve the position a little bit more let's keep everything safe i hope i don't yes we need we need to uh, not take care that uh, uh, sorry we, we need to uh, make sure that we don't uh, blunder not anything okay so even though we are under some uh, major time pressure not, not major time pressure because we still got four minutes but Always try to understand if maybe you are about to blunder something. Uh, keep it safe, guys. Keep it safe. Okay, and I do want to exchange this bishop. This bishop is quite weak. Okay, so... Obviously, he's about to uh, take this pawn. Yeah, and then he's got a nice fork, so... How can we continue in this game? Hmm, not such a simple position. 
not such a simple position, but again, I don't really want to uh, waste too much time. Okay, so we exchange. And we are still up the exchange, not something too severe, but this is still good for us. Now, um, he's going for the pawn, so we can leave. I guess maybe rook to e7, yes, okay, makes sense. Now, again, we do need to be careful, guys. Let's go back. Okay, so he's going for the pawn. We can defend. And he can also, he can also uh, try to uh, push the pawn, so we need to be aware of that. Yes, we need to be aware of that. Um, let's get the tempo on the, on the knight. If the knight takes... Oh, so he's got this annoying pin. Yeah, very annoying. Very, very annoying, but... We're still going to be up the exchange. Yes, and it's got this very annoying checkmate. Not checkmate, but check. So yeah, basically we cannot do anything. Very annoying. Very, very annoying, but we are still have time to flag him, maybe, so let's take and take. Yeah, I'm really pissed that uh, I'm kind of losing that, but... We need to play fast as possible, and still we cannot take this pawn because of this knight, so... Let's try to attack the knight. Yeah, and we cannot do anything. Okay, so let's try to play as fast as possible. Yeah, so very, very, very weak game. I don't really, I'm not really happy about my position. I think I could do much, much better. Okay, so at least we can try to flag. Okay, so it's a draw. Okay, so we both play well. <clears throat> he did much better, of course. So, so in this position, uh, white is still slightly better. Now we are better in this position. This was actually good. This was also a good move. Okay, obviously we had a very nice fork. Okay, so if Five. Yeah, so rook c8 is good, but with the second rook, so okay, very very interesting idea. And we still got the advantage. I'm trying to understand when exactly did I lost my advantage. Yeah, so I guess in this position I already played uh, quite passive, like b5. I really didn't uh, think about it, but it's a much much better position. Yes, because now he's got this uh, very annoying outpost. Yeah, and in this position, we are still slightly better, but now we are starting to lose the advantage. Yeah, so 
I did mess up, yeah, and I did mess up completely with this diagonal because takes takes, and then he had this uh, maneuver with the with the knight that uh, completely crushed my game. So with the rook against the knight, I could maybe win this game, but yeah. So I did manage to flag him, but yeah, not not the strongest uh, game from my side. I still play like uh, uh, 2100, so still a good game, okay? It's not like a bad one, but I will try to do uh, better in uh, in future games. So guys, thank you for watching. Hope you learned a thing or two, and see you in the next video.